Hey guys, today we're going to be working on linear inequalities, which is section 1.7 in your book. Um, so here's some different notations that you're going to see. You've got an open interval. Um, that means your number is between A and B being numbers. Um, but you cannot include A and B in your answer. You've got a closed interval, which means, yes, you can equal A and B. Um, you've got infinite intervals um, going either way. So from negative infinity to a number or from a number to positive infinity. Um, you've also got some different notations that you might be looking at. Um, we are going to be working with interval and SIP builder notation and interpreting that into a graph. So this is just some stuff that you can look at um, when you're looking at different types of notation. All right, so let's try a couple. So right now these are in interval notation and we're going to go ahead and put them in set builder notation. So you start off with X such that and we want X to be between negative 2 and 5. And then I always go back and look and say, can it equal? So that bracket right there means yes, it can equal negative 2. So we're going to add that equals. Um, that parenthesis means no, you cannot equal 5. So we're done. Um, it also says graph. So we're going to have a little graph here. And we're going to put negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so bracket for negative 2 because yes we can equal negative 2 and a parenthesis for 5 and we're actually everything in between there. Alright, moving on to the next one. Oops. Um, same concept, so we want x such that x is between 1 and 3.5 Um, and then go back, see how they both have brackets? That means yes, it can equal 1, yes, it can equal 3.5. And now we're going to graph that. So we've got, we'll do 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to go ahead and go to 4. Um, so we're at 1, give it a bracket, yes, you can equal 1, 3.5. Give it a bracket, everything in between. So that's 3.5, just so we know. Um, last but not least, we've got an infinity. Um, so I'm going to actually start... Ooh, I don't know what I just did. There we go. I'm going to start with the graph just so we see it. Um, so we'll look at 0 negative 1, negative 2. Um, so we're actually going from negative infinity, which is all down here, all the way up to negative 1. And no, you cannot equal negative 1. So we're going to give it that parenthesis. We want everything to negative infinity. So we're heading that way. Um, so putting that in um, set builder, notation. We're going to say x such that. And we want everything, we want x to be less than negative 1. Everything less than negative 1. All right, moving on. Um, you could have some intersections and unions, and I reminded you of the signs. So intersection, it kind of looks like an n. Union looks like a u. Um, so intersection is what they have in common. Union is the joint, everything put together. Um, so let's look at the first one. It's an intersection. So we're actually going to use the graph to find out where they overlap. So I'm going to go from 1 to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to get some different colors here just so we see it. Um, so from 1 to 3, and both of them get brackets, 2, 3, All right, there's my first one, and we'll get another one, let's go with green, 
um, two to six. So one, two, and that's going to get a parenthesis all the way to six. So this is an intersection. So you want to see where they're overlapping, which is this part right here. All right, this is where they're overlapping. So it looks like we're overlapping from two to three is where they both have in common. Um, two, again, is that open parenthesis. And three is closed. Because yes, you can equal three. All right, let's do the same thing on the next one. So the next one is the same numbers, except for we want the union. So if we look back to our graph over here, union means everything. So we want both of those to be on there. So it looks like we're going, dang it, there it goes. It looks like we're going from one to six, right? Because we want everything union. And one is included and six is not. So we just use the same graph for both of those questions. All right, we got some solving. Let me go back to a different color. Um, solving is just treat it like an equal sign. The only thing to watch out for is if you ever multiply or divide by a negative, um, your sign is going to flip. So just reminding you of that. Um, so let's subtract 2 from both sides. So we've got negative 3x is less than or equal to 3. And then my last step, I'm actually going to divide by a negative 3. So that's when your sign flips. So we're less than, now we're going to go greater than or equal to negative 1. Um, and it does say graph it. So we're going to graph it. So we're going to start with 0, negative 1, And it says x is everything greater than or equal to. So again, negative 1 is going to get that bracket. And we want everything greater than, so we're going to head all the way to infinity. How would you write that in interval notation? From negative 1 to infinity. Again, infinities always get that open parenthesis, and negative 1 is going to get a bracket, because yes, we can equal it. Um, next one, same concept, so subtract. Subtract 3x from both sides. So we've got 1 is greater than 4x minus 15. We're going to add 15 to both sides and divide both sides by 4. Now if that bothers you, you can always switch this around. So you can put the x first. Just make sure your sign is facing your 4. So you would read that as x is less than 4. Let's go ahead and put it on a graph. So I'm going to put 4, 3, Two. Um, so we want everything less than 4, so we cannot equal 4, so we're going to give it a parenthesis. And we want everything less than 4, so we're heading towards negative infinity. So remember your interval notation. We're going to have negative infinity all the way up to 4. And you cannot include 4, so make sure it gets a parenthesis. Um, next one, we're going to go ahead and clear this fraction. So if we multiply by our least common multiple, it looks like 6. Um, we're going to multiply everything in here by 6. So over here, you're going to have 6 divided by 2 gets me 3. So 3 times x minus 4 is greater than or equal to right here. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so you're going to have 2 times x minus 2. And then the 6's will cancel out, so you'll still have that plus 5. 
Um, let's go ahead and distribute 3x minus 12 and then 2x minus 4 plus 5. And we'll combine some like terms here. So we have 3x minus 12 and then 2x, 5 minus 4 gets me 1. Um, I'm going to subtract 2x's from both sides. So you got x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 1. And add 12. So you have x is greater than or equal to 13. So on a number line, we're at 13, 14, 15, right? We're going up. So yes, you can equal, give it a bracket. And again, we want to head to infinity, everything greater than. If you're talking about interval notation, we have 13 to positive infinity. And again, 13 gets that bracket because yes, you can equal 13. I think this is our last slide. Um, so we're going to talk about the empty set and all real numbers. Um, kind of like the no solutions, those inconsistent ones we talked about yesterday. Um, so let's start. All right, distribute. Why is it doing this? So 3 times x, 3x. 3 times 1 is 3, is greater than 3x plus 2. Let's go ahead and subtract that 3x from both sides. So you get 3 is greater than 2. And you ask yourself, is that true? Is 3 greater than 2? Yes, 3 is always greater than 2. And that's when you would have that all real numbers. So any number you plug in there should hold true. Next one, we're going to subtract x from both sides. So you get 1 oops, is less than or equal to negative 1. When is 1 less than or equal to negative 1? Never. Um, so that was that no solution. That was that empty set. Sorry, I don't know why this keeps freaking out on me. All right, and the last one, compound inequalities. Um, you want to isolate x into the middle. Um, so if you notice here, you've got that 2x plus 3. Whatever we do, we're just going to do to all uh, both sides, sorry. So we're going to subtract 3 from everything. So you get negative 2 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than 8. And then your last step, divide everything by 2. Again, you want to get that middle down to just an x. So you've got negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4. Um, so if you want to put that into interval notation, you've got 1 to 4, 1, yes, it can equal, oh, sorry, negative 1. Um, and then 4, it cannot equal. And if you want to put that on a graph, You've got negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you've got negative 1 is a bracket, 4 is a parenthesis, and you've got everything in between. All right, that's it. Um, get your homework done. Tell me if you have any issues. Bye.